Hi, welcome back to Engage New York, Module 4, Lesson 30. This is Concept Development. So, look at the first problem here that we have. We did this, we did this problem essentially yesterday, right? And I asked you how many tenths are in 2. So, how many tenths are in 2? How many tenths are in two? Well, there are 20 tenths in two, right? We, we did that yesterday. So how else do you know? How else do you know that is true? How about if you counted by tenths? Like, one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, all the way up to 20 tenths. And then 20 tenths is equal to two wholes. What about 10 tenths? There are 10 tenths in one whole, right? So there are 20 tenths in two, there are 10 tenths in one. And then if you divide by, a, by one tenth, If you divide by one tenth, it is the same as multiplying. It's really the same as multiplying by ten, right? Isn't that what we did yesterday? Isn't that kind of what we came to that conclusion yesterday? Well, we should have. All right, and so two times ten, so two times ten is twenty. So there are 20 tenths in two. All right. We also know that any division expression can be written as a fraction. So you can rewrite a division expression as a fraction. So let's go ahead and rewrite this division expression as a fraction. So that's what we're gonna be doing for this lesson. Rewriting division expressions as a fraction and relating the division and the decimals together. All right, so I'm going to start over here and I'm going to write 2 divide 0 0.1 and I'm going to rewrite it as 2 over 0 0.1. So the divisor is on the bottom, the dividend is on top. So what do we get? So we have two times 0 0.1. Now, this fraction looks different from most we've seen before, right? So what's different about it? Well, the denominator has a decimal point. That's weird, right? It is different, but it's perfectly, it's a perfectly acceptable fraction. We can rename this fraction though, so that de the denominator is a whole number because that just makes me uncomfortable. How about you? So question, what have we learned that allows us to rename fractions without changing their value? Now we talked about it in <clears throat> I believe the, oh, in the application problem. We talked about this one thing in the application problem. What is, what, did, what do we know about renaming a fraction without changing its value? Well, come on. You can multiply a fraction equal to one, right? Without... 1 over 1, 2 over 2, 3 over 3, right? But what fraction equal to 1 will rename the denominator as a whole number? So what do you know? How do I rename this 1 tenth as a whole number? What can I multiply by to make it a whole number. So multiplying by 2 over 2 is easy, right? 
but would that just make when but that would just make the denominator 0 0.2 so if i went 2 over 2 2 times 2 is 4 0 0.2 times 2 would be 0 0.2 that didn't do anything to help us turn this into a whole number so i think it is a it's fun to multiply by 13 over 13 but then if I multiply by 13 over 13, well, I, I, and I wouldn't, still, I'd have 1.3 down here as the denominator. So what should I multiply this, this fraction by to turn this decimal into a whole number? What do you know? What do you know? Right. Let's multiply this by 10 over 10. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of my arrow here. And I'm going to multiply by 10 over 10. All right. So what happens now? Well, I get to basically keep my numbers the same, but I'm going to have 20 over what? So when I multiply by, an, a t remember, 10, 100, or 1,000, my number gets bigger. And I move my decimal place, my decimal how many times? One time. So this becomes 20 over 1, which becomes what? 20, right? And if we just want a whole number, I mean, you could do 20 over 20, and that would be fine. But 10 over 10 works real nicely to keep this as simple as possible, right? So any fraction with a numerator and denominator that are multiples of 10 would work. So anything that had a multiple of 10 would totally work. But just keeping things simple is sometimes quite nice, right? All right, so what, do, what should we do here on number, on letter B? So let's start off by renaming this division problem as a fraction. So this goes on top, this goes on the bottom. We have two, that's our numerator, over 0 0.2. All right, so what should we do? We want to rename this fraction. We want to solve this, and what do we notice? Well, this is 2 is in the tens, right? So what should we multiply by in order to get rid of the decimal point because that's our goal we want to divide and get rid of the decimal point well could we multiply by 10 over 10 again 2 times 10 is 20. remember i'm multiplying by 10 100 or a thousand i'm multiplying by 10. my number is going to increase my decimal is going to move one time right so it's 20 over 2, which is equal to what? 10, right? Okay. Now, you could multiply by 50 over 50, but why would you even make it that difficult? Or 100 over 100. I wouldn't even go there. It's not necessary because then you're going to have to simplify your answer. So, Let's move on to 2.4 over, I mean, 2.4 divide 0 0.2. What quotient might be, what could the question might be for this expression? What do you think the quotient is? When I say the quotient, I mean the answer, right? So the quotient means the answer. So I... I see 
divide 0 0.2. In my head, I see a 24 and I see a 2. So, hmm, what could the quotient be for this expression quite possibly? 24 and 2. Do you think maybe our quotient could be something related to 12? So if you count it by 2 tenths again and got 12, 2.4 is only 4 tenths more than the last problem, and there are two groups of 2 tenths in 4 tenths. So that makes me that so that makes 12 altogether. So I'm thinking 24 tenths divided by 2 tenths is going to be 12. So I'm starting to think of it like whole number division. It almost looks like 24 divided by 12, which is, I mean, 24 divided by 2 is 12. But let's rewrite it. So this goes on top, 2.4. This goes on the bottom. The divisor goes on the bottom. Okay, here's our, here is our, our, Big. This is our big number, and we're dividing it into smaller numbers, right? Now, what can I multiply this by in order to get rid of the decimal in the denominator? Well, we can multiply by 10 over 10 again, right? And what do we know about multiplying by 10, 100, and 1,000? Well, your number increases 10 times, right? And so when you multiply by 10, your decimal moves over once on each one. So this becomes 24 over 2, which simplifies to 12. So how did that work out for you? Now, our next problem, very similar. We're going to rename it. Our goal is to rename this divisor as a whole number. So let's rewrite it. 2.4 over 0.4. All right, I want to get rid of the decimal in the denominator, what am I going to do? Well, I'm working with the tenths, right? So I'm going to multiply by 10 over 10. So what do I know about multiplying by 10, 100, and 1,000? Well, when you multiply by 10, your number becomes 10 times bigger. When you multiply by 100, your number becomes 100 times bigger. When you multiply by 1,000, your number becomes 1,000 times bigger. So how many times is my decimal going to move? So really, remember, when you're multiplying by 10, 100, and 1,000, you're just moving your decimal. So you're going to move it how many times? One time. So you end up with 24. You're going to move it one time over 4, which is going to give you 6. How did that work out for you? All right, next page. All right, okay. so how does this problem look different than the problems that we just solved? How does this problem look different? So how is this expression different from the ones we just evaluated? Well, this one is dividing by hundredths this time, right? Our divisor is now four hundredths rather than four tenths. So our divisor is still not a whole number, and now it's a hundredth. So question, will multiplying by ten tenths create a whole number divisor? If I just multiply by tenths, by ten? Is that going to change this number into a whole number? No. Four hundredths times ten is still only four tenths. So that's still not a whole number. So 
sensor divisor is now a hundredth. The most efficient way to rename it as a whole number is to multiply by 100 hundredths. So let's see if we should, we, what happens when we do it. So let's rewrite it. 1.6 over 0 0.04. Now I'm going to multiply by 100 over 100. And what does that do? It changes this. So I'm going to move my decimal how many times now? Two times, right? Because it's 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100. So each 10, you're going to move the decimal for each 10, right? So 10 and 10. 10 times 10 is 100. You're going to move it twice. So now what is our new number? It's 160 over 1, 2. It's over 4, right? Now, 160 over 4 simplifies to 40. So let's go to B. Let's rewrite our problem. 1.68 over 0 0.04. So this expression is equivalent to 1.68, right? Now, what are we going to do? 1.68, 1 and 68 hundredths over divide into 0 0.04. So how many, zero, how many four hundredths is inside of 1.68? So what am I going to multiply by? 100 over 100, right? So how does that change my number? So what do we know about multiplying by 10, 100, or 1,000? Your number either gets 10 times bigger, 100 times bigger, or 1,000 times bigger, right? So how many times is this number going to get bigger? 100 times, right? How many times do we move the decimal? 10 times 10 times 10 is 100. So I end up with 168 over 1, 2, over 4. So 168 over 4 is equal to what? 42. All right. I don't know. I feel like this is super easy to manage, and it's easy to see. All right. It's just making sure you put your numbers in the right place. Right? Just making sure your numbers go in the right place. All right, last problem for concept development. Now I have 1.68 over 0 0.12. What am I going to multiply by? Am I working with tenths or am I working with hundredths? I'm working with hundredths. So I'm trying to get rid of the decimal. So I'm multiplying by 10, 100, or 1,000 to get rid of the decimal. When I get rid of the decimal, it makes division so much simpler. So what do I know about multiplying by 10, 100, or 1,000? It gets 10 times bigger. It gets 100 times bigger. It gets 1,000 times bigger. So how many times am I going to move my decimal? Two times. How many times am I going to move my decimal? Once, twice. So I end up with 168 over 12. 168 over 12 is equal to 14. All right, that is it for this, for this um, lesson. So next, what we're doing is we're going over to problem set. The problem set. We're going straight in to doing exactly the same thing. Rewrite the division expression as a fraction and then divide. They started the first two for you. So here, you're multiplying by 10. You're multiplying by 100. It's because you have hundreds here and you have tens here, right? So you have four problems essentially and you just need to solve that, that one. 
on the back. Oh, look, this one you just need to rewrite. So you have to rewrite it, right? And solve. Problem two, 15 divided three is five. Explain why it is true that 1.5, 1 1.5 1 .5 divide 0 0.3 and 0 0.15 and 0 0.03 have the same quotients. So you need to model what you did and then tell me why. Give me a simple explanation with words. And then problem four, three, Mr. Volok buys 2.4 kilograms of sugar for his bakery. He pours two, 0 0.2 kilograms of sugar into separate bags. So he has this much, and then he pours, he distributes into two more, right? How many, how many bags of sugar can he make? So what operation are we using? We're taking something and dividing it, right? So what operation are you going to do here? So he has this much, and he pours this much into each one. What is that problem going to look like? I bet you can figure it out. So how much is the starting point? How much are you dividing up, right? Then if he pours 0 0.4 kilograms of sugar into separate bags, how many bags of sugar can he make? So now we've just changed. We're still using 2.4 kilograms. But now we're dividing it into separate bags of 0 0.4 kilograms. Then we have problem four, two wires, one 17.4 meters long and one 7.5 meters long were cut into, were cut, dividing, right, into pieces of three meters long. How many? Such pieces can be made from both wires. So how many pieces will you get if you cut them into three meters long? Then Mr. Smith has 15.6 pounds of oranges to pack for shipment. He can ship 2.4 pounds of oranges in a large box and 1.2 pounds in a smaller box. If he ships 15 large boxes, what is the minimum number of boxes required to ship the rest of the oranges? Okay, so remember, we've talked about problems like this before. If you have leftover, it's like the bus where the kids going on a field trip on the bus. If there are kids left over, you filled up the bus and there's still kids left over waiting to get on the bus, but there's no more room on the bus. Do you just tell those kids, sorry kids, you're not going on the field trip? Or do you have to get another bus? So consider that as you complete this problem right here. Okay, so complete the problem set and then come back to check your work. Don't forget you're supposed to go back and complete the uh, the sprint just as good practice. All right, so meet me back here to go over the problem set debrief after you have completed your work so you can actually check your work.